Hey, what's up everyone? Matt Montanez here. Today in Plugins In Depth, I'm gonna talk about the r de -esser. This is my favorite de to use. I use it on pretty much everything. I use it on vocals. I use it on instruments when I need to, uh, the full mix when I need to. I use it during, um, well, the full mix during mastering. So I use it um, during like voiceover work and stuff like that. I use it very, very often. It's my go-to and it works great. It sounds great. It's very transparent and it's awesome. Very, 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 very easy to use. So, um, what is the de -esser? Well, a de -esser is basically a compressor with a side chain. So, um, basically, the EQ in it, you know, lets you tell, okay, we just want to compress this set of frequencies. Um, so, basically, right here at 5,506 hertz, you want to compress that down a little bit to... To, to make it quieter because you don't want it so loud. So that's what you're doing. Also too, for the de is it's usually just for high frequencies. Like you can't really go too low. See, you can only go down to 2K on this one. And if I pull up the stock one, let's see, plugins, dynamics, and let's go with the stock de here. You can go down to 500 Hertz, which is actually super duper low. Um, you know, low mids there. But yeah, usually you could only do high frequencies. And like even in the stock one, you can even have this high frequencies only button. So it's things like that. But yeah, that's what the de is doing. It's bringing down those high noises, sibilances, you know, your harsh S's and stuff like that. Your shh and shh, all those noise. That's what you're bringing down in the mix. And yes, you can pull it down with some EQ and everything. But a lot of times you take the crispiness out of the vocals. And you don't want to do that at times, like the nice air in there. So then you would want to use a de where it just kind of brings it down a little bit, dips it. And basically, yeah, you can also do that with automation. You can go in here and every S you can pretty much just come in and like turn it down. But that's a lot of work. You don't want to do that. That's why we have compressors. That's why we have de you know, to make things automatic and make it faster, make your workflow go faster and make things even automatically. So in this de like I said, it's my favorite one. And I like it a lot because it's transparent. It doesn't add weird phase noises. It doesn't add a weird color or nothing like that. When they created this Renaissance de they uh, made sure it had the phase compensation. So like I said, it doesn't create that phase. And they also made sure it doesn't add any weird color into your mix. And that's also good too, because you don't want to throw DS in there when you got a great sounding vocal or whatnot. And then all of a sudden you have a, a new color. It just changes the whole tone of the song and you don't want that. So it was really good that they did that on this one. So when you're, when you're working with the de uh, a lot of people think you should throw it before the EQ. A lot of people say it should be the last thing in your mix, like the last thing in your chain. For me personally, I throw it at the end of my chain. It's always the last thing. I usually put it down here like in the um, E insert. I believe that's E insert or it's an I insert, excuse me. Uh, the I insert at, or... Um, even down here in the last one in J insert, I always put it at the end. A lot of people like to do it in the beginning because I've heard a lot of people tell me too, wouldn't you want to fix all the problems first before you start boosting and things like that? And that's what this does. You know, it cuts back, you know, it dips. Um, so people like to do subtractive EQ before they do um, um, additional EQ, like adding stuff in there. So you can do that. And that's the way, like, even if you read the PDF file for this, it even tells you to place it before you EQ and stuff. But for my preference, I don't like to work that way, so I throw it at the end. And one reason why I tell you guys that is because there's no right or wrong way to do anything. It's the way you work, how you like it. If you like the way it sounds after everything, throw it there after. If you like it in the middle of everything, throw it there in the middle. You know, it's just the way you prefer to work. It's your ear. It's your preference. It's your mix, you know. So you can work the way you want to work, but that's just the suggested way is to throw it before the EQ. But like I said, for me, preference, I like to put it at the end. So here I'm going to just put it there at like one of the last inserts in this plugin chain. And uh, this was just some vocal work I did for uh, Mine and Chizzy's app, Audio Coach. It says My Tools Audio. Originally it was called My Tools, but um, actually it's called Audio Coach. And we're in beta testing right now. If you guys are interested, go ahead and go to audiocoachapp.com. And then you can fill out a form and become a beta tester. And beta testing is only for iOS devices. Sorry, Android guys. Um... But yeah, so this is the audio work I did for that. And then also I'll bring this de into um, a song so you can hear it on some instruments and stuff. 
to get into these parameters and stuff, the first things we see is um, we got frequency type mode. This is just a graph to show you what how much you're dipping, attenuating. Then you got your range, a threshold, and then the audio and side chain. The way I like to work, I like to go right to left with this plugin. I don't go left to right. When you go here and you go right to left, you have this, um, these two buttons, audio and sidechain. Basically, audio is letting you hear the full audio, what's going into the plugin. When you click sidechain, that's letting you hear what that, EQ, like I said, the EQ is set on to hear just those frequencies. So since we're at 5506, that's what we're only going to hear. So if I pull it down, you get more. So that's what you're hearing. So I like to go to sidechain, and I like to find the problem frequencies there in that area. This is drill set one. So right there, that's where you hear a lot of the tss, 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 and that's the part where you want to dip. Because if I don't have this plugin, I mean, I didn't record it bad. I did it real quick here at the house. I didn't do it bad, but it still has a lot of sibilance in there. The tss, tss. This is drill set one in the and that drill set one. This is drill set one. So that's what I want to pull out. This is drill set one in the and that's what it does. It's calming it down a little bit, and you can see now that it's hitting, it's actually dipping it negative 11 db there so it's it's dipping quite a bit and it works really well and you can see it still sounds natural so then the next thing i like to do is i like to set the threshold and that's pretty much setting the uh sensitivity like uh where it's going to start dipping at like uh, if too much passes that that you know that threshold the the limit then it's going to dip so if I go up here to zero, this is drill set. One. It's not going to do anything. So you want to start dipping it down some. This is drill set one in the. 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 This is drill set one. And it sounds good right there, even though it's dipping out about seven. It sounds really good. It still sounds real natural. You don't hear it all of a sudden. This is drill set one. It's not dipping way far where it's starting to sound like a whisper. And now I'm gonna have to boost back. So you want to pull it down some, just like that. This is drill set one in the. And it sounds really, really good. Like I said, it sounds real natural. It sounds clean. You still got your highs in there. It's not, you know, killing them like crazy. Next thing we have here is we have this range. And the way I like to see the range is I like to see it as, like I've explained in other plugins, it's like the amount, like, like how much you want it to go. So basically on this plugin, it's the amount, but the amount as in that's the maximum attenuation it'll do. So that's the max it'll do is negative 16. This is drill set one in the. This is drill set one in the. So I can I dipped all the way and it's only going to six. This is drill set one. So if I go here, this is drill set one in the. This is drill set one. It's only going to negative point uh, negative nine point six. So that's the maximum it'll dip out. This is drill set one in the. This is drill set one in the. This is drill set one in the. This is drill set. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, why can't you just throw the threshold all the way down and then just mess with the range? This is drill set one. You can, but as you can hear, like now that I did that and it's only dipping out the negative three. This is drill set one. Like my vocals sound darker. Like it, it just made the vocals sound darker there. But if I go back to something like this. This is drill set one. I got the full higher frequencies all up in there where it sounds more natural. So yeah, that's what you need to keep in mind. So it's like... um. I guess you can say it's like the ceiling, you know what I'm saying? Like in a limiter, it's like a ceiling type of deal. That's the max it'll do. And then you mess with the threshold to fine tune it. This is drill set one in the, this is drill set one in the, this is drill set one. Just like that. All right, then we got this right here and it's two modes, right? You got a split mode, you got a wide band mode. So like the split mode, what it's doing, and this is real cool. The split mode, what it's doing, it's working with the selected frequency. That's what it's showing you, the selected frequency. When you do wide band, as you can see, all of a sudden you have this purple guy going all the way across, or pink guy, or whatever. Um, it's going all the way across from the bottom all the way to the top because now it's doing the full audio sound. That's what it's analyzing. Here, you're only analyzing the high frequencies. And here, you're analyzing the entire audio. So that's what that's doing. This is drill set one in the, 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 this is drill set one. And you can tell when I put it in wide band like that, my vocals get a little darker and stuff. So like right here. This is drill set one in the, this is drill set one in the, this is drill set one. 
we're at about 4.62. Let's go to wide band. This is drill set one in the, this is drill set one in the, this is drill set. Same thing, 4.62. But now let me toggle between the two and you'll hear that split modes keeping my vocals a little bit brighter and then wide bands keeping them a little darker. This is drill set one in the, 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 this is drill set. So when I like to work with this, I highly recommend to just stick in split mode. There might be times where you want to go in wide band mode, but for me, I've never ever have yet went in wide band mode. It's always been split mode. And then you got this type, right? This band goes into a high pass, as you can tell, or it goes into this bell. You see what I'm saying? So it dips down. And this is basically like dialing in just that frequency. So it's just basically like an EQ. So if I got you an EQ here, and it's just, here's a seven band, and you got this shelf. So basically it's doing this and it's just making a notch. So it's pulling out just that specific thing. If you go in the shelf, it's pulling out all the highs. So sometimes I would say this, you can go into this mode, but a majority of the time I stay in the shelf just because it sounds more natural. But let's hear it here. This is drill set one in the. 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 This is drill set one. Yeah. So like I said, for me, it sounds more natural with the shelf. And doing this, you have to be more aggressive for sure. This is drill set one in the, this is drill set one. In but keep in mind too, with the de-esser, if you get too aggressive, you'll make your guy start sounding like they have a lisp or something. Your guy or girl, they'll sound like they have a lisp, like, like they have a lisp. Yeah. So like, let's, let's, let's go get aggressive with this. This is drill set one in the, 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 this is drill set one. So you, you hear how it sounds like I'm talking like this, this is drill set one, because it sounds like you start giving them a list. This is drill set one. And you don't want to do that. So you always want to be light with your DSers. This this is drill set one in the 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 this is drill set one and like I said all that shelf just sounds a lot smoother and then of course frequency which I already messed with it for you guys is just going through it like that and just choosing the frequencies you want to start dipping out all right so let me pull up an actual song now and show you things on like an instrument all right everyone so I'm back and uh, I decided to bring up this session uh, that I had mixed and everything a while a little while back, a few weeks ago. And um, it's a two track and I decided to show you this one because I want to show you that I enhanced it, the two track a little bit with uh, some highs, some low end. But um, that when you put the RDSer here on like a two track or something, you can really help out the two track by pulling out some like bad sounding stuff or even lowering it. So let's go in here. So, for example, just like that, you hear all the ch -ch 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 -ch. that sound. It's like on top of everything. So we're gonna dip it out with the deesser. So I just dropped it in. I haven't moved any settings. That's exactly how it is, and I'll have it um, on, and then I'll toggle it off. see it really does make a difference and it's real subtle where it does well it's not even subtle you can hear it quite a bit but it, it's gentle enough where it doesn't jack up the beat so let's um let's dial in some settings here and see what we get so let's go with side chain first
know, so you can tell it just brings it down just enough underneath the beat now where it sounds really nice and comfortable. It just sits there. And like I can come in here and I can try to do that with an EQ, which I'll pull the EQ and let's A B them and hear the difference. So oops, so let's pull this and this and see my setting here. So it's at 88, 83. Eight point eight oops. 8,000, right there, 8.88, no, it won't let me get, okay, so let's try, do you have to have the K in there, 8.883K, there we go, so 8.88K, and let's bring it down, so I was attenuating, how much was I attenuating, let's see, let's go back, about six so let's go 5.92 5.92 all right so it dips let's go here and let's hear how this sounds you see how the eq the EQ made it a lot darker. It pulled out a lot of the highs. It pulls out everything there at the high end and it just keeps it there completely. So it's darker. But then when I go back to the yes sir, it's just gentle and it's gently dipping when it needs to. what i'm saying you can use this deesser on a lot of things you can use it on instruments vocals just anything you need to have that side chain eq compressing like that and it's just a quick tool to use it or else you would have to side chain an eq to a compressor and do this and that so instead of doing all that work you just use a deesser all right everyone hope this helps i hope you got a better understanding on how to use the rdesser and use it on a two track or instruments and use it in vocals um as always, keep creating music. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. And talk to you soon.